Hey everybody, it's Alan, and I hope that you're doing well. January 19th, 2006, the world lost the great soul singer, Mr. Wilson Pickett. Let's celebrate his life and legacy by listening to the song, I Found a Love. And we're going to listen to part one and two together. So I Found a Love, part one and part two by the great Wilson Pickett, passed away on this day in 2006. You know I've always felt That everybody needs somebody to love Do you know late at night when them raindrops begin to fall out From your windowsill That's the time you need someone to hold real tight Someone to whisper sweet things in your ear Someone to tell you, honey, everything's all right. Sweet. 
speak to me She been so kind She been better to me She been better to me Than I've been to myself So as I'm listening to that this particular time, I'm thinking to myself, God, this must be really interesting if you're listening to it through headphones, which I am not right now. Because the way the song is recorded, it's so, so, so hard panned left and right. You know, you got the drums, bass, and and guitar in one speaker. You got the harmony vocals or the backing vocals and the horn section in the other speaker and Wilson dead set in the middle. And of course I realize this is an Atlantic records recording and I have talked about this one particular documentary called Tom Dowd, the language of music. And it's on it, it you know, Tom Dowd was a major feature of Atlantic records um, and all of its subsidiaries for a number of years. And he, in a way, pioneered the art of stereo recording. Um, he, he said he got the second eight-track recording system that Ampex had ever actually produced, right after Les Paul got his eight-track. And so he had the ability to do multi-track recording in a time period where a lot of recording studios were either recording direct live or they were recording um, in two-track or three-track stereophonic sound hadn't really been fully invented and introduced to an audience at the time too so he was recording multi-track and with the ability to record and 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 produce in stereo but there were no you know stereophonic systems out there radio wasn't broadcast in stereo uh, home home record players weren't playing in stereo so he did record a lot of early uh, Atlantic recordings in stereo, which then when stereophonic broadcasts were released on FM radio and AM radio, and, and record players were able to produce stereophonic sound, the Atlantic archives had the ability to re you know, re-release these albums in full stereo. And so the choice to actually pan the drums and bass and guitar hard to one side and the vocals and the, and the uh, horn section way to the other side probably came in the recording process when they just weren't 100% familiar to what to do with multi-tracks. So they may have thought at the time, I mean, this, this is, recording might actually have preceded um, uh, Atlantic getting uh, an A-track recorder. So if they were still recording on three track, what you would have is then the band probably recorded all to one side because they're on one track. The horn section and the harmony vocals or the backing vocals recorded on a third track and Wilson Pickett's vocals recorded dead center down the middle when they released it in stereo. But again, in a mono field, it was probably all right on top of one another. It's a really interesting thing when you think about recording processes or anything really i mean you know we often end up being captured by our own particular time period and we sometimes forget that things were much different back in the day you know you see these questions pop up on online platforms regularly what name something in a car that kids today would never understand and, and inevitably old folks like me are like yeah well the high beam switch on the floor would be one of those you know only having an am radio in a car would be one of those uh, manual rolling up of windows would be one of those you know um i remember watching a video on youtube of kids being introduced to a cassette player or a rotary dial telephone and and you know these these 
eight, nine, ten year old kids had now having no idea what a cassette player was or a rotary telephone was. So we have to think back and and realize that, you know, again, recording processes back in these time periods were so archaic by comparison to what we have today. But in a lot of ways, their analog sound is so, so, so much better than the digitally compressed sounds that we, you know, are so used to today. And it's why the um, vinyl industry, the record, 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 not CD, not, not, not MP3, the record industry has actually had a big resurgence because people are loving the sound of vinyl now. And again, it's just... It's a different time in a different place. That's all. That's all there is to it. And a lot of it is just pure magic. And this is an example of that, in my opinion. Um, so we pay tribute to the memory of Wilson Pickett, but I think in this particular conversation, he we should be thanking him for more than just his music because it's got me thinking anyway about, you know, the the old school way of recording and how much better a lot of records sounded back in the day by comparison to the way they're produced today. With that said, hope you enjoyed this. Please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. We can talk about it further. Just know that I appreciate you and I wish you well. Take care.